from the Conservatives by a decisive margin. The Liberal Democrats polled 16,231 votes. Labour came second with 14,238 and the Conservatives third with 9,934. The election was held following the death of the Conservative MP Geoffrey Dickens. The result had been predicted, but it still come as a blow to John Major. We go over now to Oldham, our political editor, Adam Bolton. Adam, good morning once again. Good morning, Alan. A blow, as we say there, to John Major. Obviously, a celebration from the Liberal Democrats. So how, how do you see the overall result? Well, I think in the end you have to accept that uh, by-elections are about electing a new MP and whoever gets that MP uh, wins. In this case, it is the Liberal Democrats who've shown that in spite of a very concerted effort by the Labour Party and, of course, uh, the Conservative machine, that they're still a figure in British politics, can still uh, achieve these by-election victories. I think if they hadn't given their strong uh, position in local government, it could have been near fatal to the party and they might have withered away. Labour, of course, are saying that they did... Uh, uh, perform very strongly here. That's certainly true. Their share of the vote went up by more than the Liberal Democrats' share did. On the other hand, we've seen the Blair factor used uh, to the full. Uh, uh, Tony Blair came here three times. He talked about victory and he hasn't won. So perhaps he looks a little tarnished now uh, as a uh, national politician. He looks like just another politician who wins some and perhaps loses others. As far as the Tories are concerned, they're saying, well, their votes bottomed out. But at the same time, coming third, is not much good and it really will be a disappointment to them that they perhaps didn't raise their vote a bit more given the emphasis which has been placed on John Major's courage uh, in deciding to uh, call a leadership election and then winning it. Quite a bad result actually, quite, quite a, a poor third for the Tories wasn't it Adam? Yes, I think, it, I think it was a poor third. Just how poor, uh, I, let's uh, ask Dr. Michael Thrasher, Sky's election analyst from the University of Plymouth, uh, how bad was the Tories' result? How does it compare with other by-elections? Well, in terms of other by-elections, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not their vote hasn't gone down by as much as it went down in Christchurch and Newbury and so on. But in, in general terms, it's, it is an awful result. I mean, their vote's fallen by over 20%. Uh, and they really are in a, in a dismal trough. Of course, they will argue, well, this is better uh, vote in the by-election than they got in the May local election. So they might argue that they've turned the corner, but they're still losing. It's better by, by two or three percent. Yes, by two or three percent, but they will say, well, that's a crucial two or three percent, and therefore they've turned the corner, and from here on in, there's a recovery. But really and truly, I mean, they, this is their, what, their sixth by-election loss this Parliament. Uh, they don't look as though they can uh, actually um, hold any seats. And, of course, as you pointed out earlier on, their majority is so wafer-thin now that loss of any other further by-elections, they are really in serious trouble. If you try to project national trends, who comes out stronger from this, Labour or the Liberal Democrats? Well, the Labour vote has gone up significantly more than the Liberal Democrat vote. Uh, but perhaps there, too, it's, it's a, if, in that regard, it's a false result. The Labour vote went up by 14%, but... In the local elections, it went up by 12%. So they, the Labour Party will say this is one of their best by-election results since the war. But again, they've thrown so many resources at this, both in terms of personnel, in terms of canvassing and all the rest of it, that their vote share has barely risen above that that they achieved uh, in May. So I think privately in the Labour Party, some people will say, is it really worth, if you like, investing this amount of energy into this kind of by-election. Now, how should people square what they've seen today, the Liberal Democrats showing they still have strength locally, can still win by-elections, with the national opinion polls? We had another one today which had them down, Liberal Democrats down, I think, on 12%, 12%. with uh, uh, Labour Party with more than 50% of, of, of the yes. support of the country, according yes. to the opinion poll. How does this, what does this really say about Liberal Democrats' strength in Britain? Well, I think more and more it says that the Liberal Democrats can if you like, do well in constituencies where there's a clear tactical vote. Uh, if, if you like, at the last general election, they squeezed the Labour vote in this constituency, whereas the Labour vote went up nationally in Littleborough and Saddleworth, it fell by 6%. And so the Liberal Democrat message has to be, ignore what the opinion polls are saying, 12%, that's nonsense in actual fact. They all say, what you have to do is look at each and every constituency and say, who, which of the two main opposition parties is best placed to ask the Conservatives in Littleborough and Saddleworth they've clearly made the point it's the Liberal Democrats and succeeded. A difficult question I know and a final one but do the voters 
understand this complexity, if you like, of a party being stronger in a constituency than it might be nationally or vice versa? Well, it's, that's a, a good question, further complicated by the fact that, of course, we're going to have boundary changes so that the voters in Littleborough and Saddle have voted for the last time in this constituency and it becomes a completely new constituency for the next general election. Uh, that said, uh, the voters will be told by the parties, particularly by the Liberal Democrats and by Labour, that we are, in fact, the second best place party. We are the party that you vote for if you wish to get rid of the Conservatives. And that really is the biggest fear that Conservatives have at the next general election, is that the electorate want to get rid of them, and they know the most effic efficient and effective way to get rid of them. Dr. McPherson, thank you very much indeed. Well, the Liberal Democrats are having a victory party at this very moment, and uh, early in the morning, uh, Paddy Ashdown will be coming here for a victory press conference, and I'll let you into a secret that uh, was a known fact this morning, so the Liberal Democrats were fairly confident. Well, Adam, you mentioned the campaign, and he mentioned Tony Blair in connection with the Labour campaigning. What about the other parties, and particularly the, the Conservatives? Well, the Conservatives did try a different strategy this time. Uh, they didn't go for the morning press conferences. I think the calculation uh, of uh, their media advisors was that press conferences were just being uh, turned into occasions where journalists went along and threw whatever was the current national problem at the relevant minister. So they didn't go for that sort of exposure. They had a rather... Uh, uh, striking uh, candidate, a fairly uh, eccentric fellow, but clearly one who was well established here, having worked for the uh, previous MP, Geoffrey Dickens, whose death caused this by-election. He was well known, he was uh, very happy to go out on the doorstep, and the result for the Conservatives shows that at least they managed to limit the damage. They didn't do here any worse than they've been doing, as Michael was saying, in local elections. So I think we might see uh, that the Conservatives are going to try to appeal rather more above the heads of the television and the newspaper professionals and say that they're taking their message to ordinary people uh, in the hopes that uh, that can get them out of this trough. But at the end of the day, if we look at this result, if we look at the Tories' position in the opinion polls, if we look at John Major's very slender majority in the House of Commons, we can say that the Tories are in the worst position uh, still uh, than that they have been since they came to power and that their prospects of the general election coming up still look very difficult indeed. Adam, thank you very much indeed.